Peace out, house. This is what we're rolling in. But we're not taking horses. Well, they're, they're dirt bikes. This is the annual father-son hunt. This slide right here, this is my backup spot. I'm gonna put a camera on here. The Elbuck, as I call him, he's just really wide. This will be my third year after him. I got eyes on him last time we were here 10 days ago scouting. And uh, he was six miles away. I do think he gets pressured. He's at a public walk-in area, public access on private. And I'm, we're gonna go over there and see how many gosh darn ground blinds are set up. But uh, the last spot we were just at had like five ground blinds in a little mile area. I got someone's ground blind literally 30 yards from mine. So this place, like I said, there's more hunters than there are antelope. But uh, we just bumped a group. They came out this slide. So I'm gonna put a camera on here and I'm gonna put a blind up. Let's set this ground blind up. All right, so this is the ground blind set up. There's a corner of this fence that antelope like to slide under, but we just witnessed them go about 50 yards and jump the fence. A group of uh, six does, well, does and fawns. Usually the big buck will hook up with them anytime now. And I think we're gonna probably go see if we can get eyes on him. He'll get pushed over here. So this is kind of like our slow play setup after the first, uh, couple days of hunting I'll probably be here all right dad now we're going to your spot yeah. to go see how many ground blinds are up and assess the situation yeah and maybe look for that hammer and flyers I draw well, let's backtrack that way then okay it's a good setup yeah it is hopefully you'll shoot out of the right side you'll probably shoot out of this one or right over here they they come at you here like this and then they they, they turn and then they get on this road and they walk this road right down and they go right to the corner. And I, last year I had them pegged at seven, no, two years ago, it was 7.30 in the morning. They would, they would be coming from that way. The cool thing about this spot is they do go back towards that desert. That's all public BLM. There's a side road right here. I've taken my dirt bike and I've cruised past them two miles, parked, go up a washout and got on them and belly crawled. So you do have some spot and stock potential. And then last year, up there is where I got that yeah. opportunity on that big buck way up there. God, it was so, it was so hot last night. The today it's... Good morning. Opening day antelope. Full moon starting to set. Shooting light is almost...
Well, first off, it's opening day. Second of all, I've only had dopes come through. I've had a four bucks want to come through, but they spent 90 minutes going up and down this fence until they finally figured a different way. I've got two bucks right now. They got to about a hundred. And they, oh, they made it under, damn it. I was gonna shoot, made it under, so we're SOL. Well. <sighs> Brutal. I don't know if I like this spot. A lot of antelope cross about 500 yards down in a way I, in a place I've never seen them cross so they're pretty hip to these blinds and uh, it's really flat out here there's not a lot of undulation yeah I would have shot at him he was decent decent I still haven't seen a great great buck usually there's at least one when they get under slides that I thought were blocked. Anyways, we're just checking in. We got about five more hours. It's pretty hot today. It's gonna get hotter every day. So today's day seven. We're supposed to be leaving in a couple hours. Came out for the last morning. Spot stock. Got an awesome drainage ditch. Had this bucket 35 and he busted me. And he looped around and I sprinted probably 300 yards and got in front of him. And he stopped for long enough for me to range him and shoot him 57 and a half. He definitely jumped the string a little bit. The arrow was further back than I liked, so it required one more. I mean, he was hurting, but he went over here and laid down with his head up. I snuck into 62 and 
shot broke, felt really good. He didn't even, he only flinched when the arrow went through him. So I think he's down. My buddy Tyler is tagged out and he's been basically my Sherpa. He had the days off, so thank you, Tyler. We're gonna go recover this bug. He's not a giant, but man, I don't have any elk or antelope meat in the freezer, and we will now. I'll give him the. Oh, he's dead. I saw him. I saw him die. I just had to get my backpack. Um, I love you. I'll call you in a couple hours when we're packed up and ready to leave. All right, honey. Sounds good. Be safe. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye. bye. But what, you know, an old BLM road and some dude's truck ready to help me pack him out. 300 yards, 200 yards. Got a long pack out. Thanks for your help, bun. This is my Sherpa, my guide, my counselor, and my buddy. Yeah. Hey, so we were supposed to be done yesterday, last night, but we stretched it out to let's hunt the morning, then go. So uh, day number seven, and it's been a really tough hunt, mainly because of more hunters than antelope, but. My buddy Tyler tagged out day one, first antelope ever, great buck, he's gonna have a taxidermy bill. Uh, we, he stuck around and the whole time he kept scouting new areas and telling me about them and taking me after two or three days of hunting with all these other hunters. So I literally say every day has been like Christmas here. We've been like sitting in a blind in the morning, watching so many antelope and then getting out and doing some spot and stocks, doing some ambushes, doing some drives. It's been crazy, but these things are cracked out. What I mean by that is they're predictably unpredictable. And you just, they're not like whitetail and their vision's insane. You literally can be 40 or 400 yards and you have to respect how fast you look up with your glass at both those distances. So they're amazing animals. They eat really terrible. Don't antelope hunt. They're sagey and they're disgusting. Go mule deer hunting. Leave the antelope to me and Tyler. We like the sagey bucks. And uh, I'm, I'm joking. Well, I'm kind of serious. But uh, yeah, so last day, got in the ditch, had this buck at 35. He busted me drawing, he spun. I was in the ditch so I could literally sprint. I think I sprinted about 300 yards, give or take. Got around him, he came through. He stopped to make a pre-rut scrape, ranged him at 57.5, shot broke pretty good, but he he heard it, he heard the shot, and they are very, uh, they'll jump the string. So the shot looked like it went back, but it came out, probably I'm gonna lose a little bit of meat. And he was jacked up. I mean, he ran hard and made it right around into this ditch. And then um, he wasn't quite dispatched yet, so I crawled into 62 and I feel like I made a really good shot. He didn't flinch until the arrow hit him. And then I think he's down right here, so let's go find him. Thank you, Lord. Well, before we take pictures and stuff, check this out. So, come check this buck out. I just wanna say, this is a public land, self-guided, do it yourself, yada, yada, yada. But what that means to you guys watching is like, you'll see on social media highlight reels. Let me give you my highlight reel. I've got my teeth kicked in six days straight and I felt like it was impossible even though I've killed a handful of goats before, so. Um, don't think that it's just, I'm good. I'd say it's just that I am really persistent and you can be too. You can make up for a lack of fitness or, or uh, mental toughness or just woodsmanship or shooting ability by just being persistent, not quitting and not squandering a second on any hunt. And that's why we got this buck. So uh, glory to God. 
Thanks to my buddy Tyler. Thanks to my wife watching two kids and working two different jobs. Uh, so I'm a blessed man and I love antelope meat. So. Remind me to find that other arrow when we're. Nice. Good buck. He had about Some 10 beautiful does. Buck. Beautiful buck. Yeah, I'm pumped. Okay, when you're using these, don't do this. Do this. Also, you can do this with a tool. But I'm going to show if you just put your finger here and pull. And then always kind of, I got some bear stuff on here. That's the last time I used it. Just cutting up my bear meat, but. And we're good to go. Now, this. Don't do that. Put it back in here. Flip it over. Flip it over. And what I do, because at one point I was an EMT in my life, and the guy filming right now is a paramedic firefighter. Thank you for your service. Just take a little electrical tape and go over here. Just don't be douchey and throw this stuff away in the woods. Just take it out and then get rid of it when you're done. Pro tip from an amateur. We are in August. Out. Turn over. And you are legal. But I got this blade out. Let's see that. I'm gonna put this blade out of the way. Got the game bags. That's a wrap. Your YouTube channel is going to get censored with all that blood. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha.